Building a computer is a straightforward process. We make sure all of our components are sitting in place, thermal paste is added, we load our operating system, and we get to our Windows environment. Now, that is all fine and dandy. But how do we know if our equipment operates well under pressure? Stress testing is the process of pushing our system beyond a normal operating limit to assess the operation and reliability of our components. This test will help us identify potential issues before they occur. To be honest, the likelihood of our components having any issues after building is extremely rare. Almost no one does initial stress testing after building, unless you're a technician or you sell maybe computers. Some people do. In other cases, we may do a stress test after many months of usage. We may do it after a sudden loss of power, maybe bottlenecks or instability issues. Computer instability may happen for many reasons. Let's cover a few. Maybe thermal paste was not applied correctly. You may have a problematic component, overheating issues, power supply problems, etc. Now, I've had problems before in which my computer crashed when using OBS. It was a software issue. Stress testing was running fine. Your problem may be unique and looking at your event viewer, reliability monitor, or symptoms is always a good first step. Remember to always place an emphasis on getting the proper drivers for all your components, manufacturer and Windows related, to prevent compatibility issues. Not having the correct drivers can cause crashes, performance issues, and sudden blue screens. So make sure all those drivers are applied correctly when building your computer and then after new updates get released. Now, let's cover how to perform a stress test on your system. Okay, so we're on our computer. Uh, in preparations of getting ready, uh, I'm gonna recommend download, downloading a hardware, hardware monitor. So just go and search for it in Google. You're gonna see hardware monitor. We click on setup. Uh, click out of the ad and next, then download now. And you can see download is going to begin. You can see their hardware monitor. You can click on it. Yes. You're going to install it. You can create, uh, you can create a desktop icon and basically that's how you install hardware monitor. Basically this uh, this program is going to be useful for seeing all the temperatures and you know, all your uh, packages on your components, GPU, CPU, you're going to be able to see everything. And I'll show you uh, with my actual computer how it looks. As we can see here, it's going to look different because this is a virtual machine. We're only downloading uh, hardware monitor so you guys can see how to get it. Okay, so make sure you download hardware monitor because this is going to be, you're going to have this open while we do a CPU stress test. And for the CPU stress test, it's on the Microsoft Store. Just type Microsoft and you're going to see Microsoft Store. And we're going to be using Cinebench. The Cinebench. And we see Cinebench right here. We click Get. And that's going to download it to our computer. You can see here. You don't need to have an account. You just click uh, get and it'll install it. Okay. Now, if you go to search bar and you type Cine, you're going to see the app Cinebench. And let's uh, do a CPU stress test on our computers. Okay. This is my system. I'm going to open hardware monitor. We can see here. We have, uh, if you don't know how to read it, you can see your, your computer, all the different components. If you see, we're going to do a CPU stress test. Intel Core i9, 12,900K, that's mine. And we can see the temperature, so you can see here packages, right? Packages, this is going to be your temperature, your general temperature, because you can have, you have VR, P core, C course. This is the one we care mostly about. And you can see your uh, megahertz. If you see they start going down, when it gets hot, that it, it seems like it's throttling, it's, it's pushing it down because it's getting too hot. We don't want to see that. So you see the temperature is around 36 degrees Celsius at idle. Uh, 36, 1 to 45, it cycles. Uh, it's not bad. So now let's, let's get our uh, Cinebench opened. Please. 
Okay, you see here the license accepted. So you can see here in Cinebench, click on advanced benchmarks that we can show you how to do the uh, minimum test duration. If you want to do a 10 minute or a 30 minutes, a prolonged testing for stability on your system, because over time, you know, it, it might take your CPU longer to malfunction. So if you do a 30 minute test and it, everything comes out fine, most likely your CPU is operating well. And we're, let's do a single core test and we're gonna have our measurements over here with the hardware monitor. And this is going to be a longer process because it's doing single core and multi-core. You're going to see how much faster it is. Okay, we can see that uh, the single core test just finished and we got a 1724 and you can see here compared to other uh, CPUs. And now we're going to do the multi-core. Let's see what we get. And you can see the points here next to the single core. You can see it's a lot faster because it's using all the cores. Okay, we can see our test finished and we can, we got a score of 24,118 points. We can see here compared, we're under the Xeon W3265M and over the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. We can see other here. And if you want to compare your CPU, you can go to this website and it's going to be nanoreview.net. And you can go here, click on Control F, and do 12,900K, which is mine. And it gets a score of 27,341 for all the cores and single core 1995. That's how you can compare uh, between yours. And they, they got to be around similar, and you'll know it's operating well on their the normal parameters. You can see mine is a little bit under. Maybe because I'm running other stuff in the background. But that's how basically you see your temperatures. My temperatures reach around 93 degrees Celsius. A little bit hot. I do have an AIO cooler. But uh, Intel CPUs do run a little bit hotter compared to AMD. And the temperature, the T-junction for the Intel i9-12900K around is... 100 de degrees Celsius, anything over, anything below 100 degrees Celsius is going to be considered somewhat normal. Although 93 degrees Celsius just may seem hot for, for uh, CPUs, but uh, it is well under the operating uh, parameters for that CPU. And that is basically how you use Cinebench to compare your multi-core, single core, the website that I showed you guys. And you can stress test that, that stress test that CPU if you have crashes, if you have blue screens or, or other stuff where you normally wouldn't have those symptoms, then it means that there could be an issue with your CPU. So pay attention to that. Uh, try to do a, a stability test, a throttling. If you want to go 10, 30 minutes, it's a good measure for being safe with uh, regards to your CPU. Uh, so now we're going to run a GPU test. You'll see, uh, and, and I'll show you guys how to download the, uh, the program. Okay, now on the computer, we're going to go to Google. We're going to type in 4Mark. And you're going to see this site, geek3ad.com, 4Mark homepage. You're going to click, and they have 4Mark 1 and 2. Download, and for example, I'm... I'm going to be using for Mark 1. They have for Mark 2, which has more, more features. But you can use either one if you want to use the newest one. You got to click on this orange one here. 
download Geek 3 Geek 3D 3D server. You're gonna click on it, and you're gonna see how it starts downloading. It's around 16.2 megabytes, and I'll show you guys how to use it right now. Okay. Okay, now in our computer, we're going to open Furmark, and you can test uh, different resolutions. I want to be testing 1920 times 1080. I have a RTX 3080, as you can see here, and you can uh, do anti-aliasing, GPU stress test. You have other tools here, GPU-C for checking uh, your GPU uh, information. And it's, it's, it's pretty good if you already have it, if not. But uh, this is just if you haven't seen GPU-C, it just gives you all the details for your uh, graphics card. And it has another one, GPU Shark and CPU Burner. Okay, we're going to do a resolution of 1920 times 1080. And then we're going we're gonna to leave anti-aliasing anti off. And we're going to do a GPU stress test. We're going to go, go. And we're going to let the GPU... It's going to start to operate. It's going to start getting hot. You're going to see that orange line starting to go up until it reaches a stable uh, temperature where it can tolerate and stabilize itself within that uh, resolution. And we can see up here, we have uh, 254 frames per second as an average. And basically, it's, it's uh, stress testing that GPU and the GPU is starting to get up to heat to where it can reach a stable uh, temperature. And because it can tolerate this um, resolution, it's, it's going to give us these uh, frames per second. And you can do this 10 or 30 minutes. And over time, you're going to see that GPU. You're going to make sure there's no crashes. You're going to make sure that it didn't have any spikes or anything weird and just you're going to be able to see like maybe 30 minutes. Uh, it's a good test. Run it for 30 minutes if you want. If you just want to see how this works, you can do whatever time you prefer. Um, you're going to see that stable temperature keeping up. And you know that your GPU is handling uh, that workload well under pressure. And, and that most likely is operating well under its normal parameters. You can see here how it's staying there, right? may go up a little more, more over time, a little bit more, but it, it's going to stay within a certain temperature range. Just make sure that it does complete the test without uh, any problems and you'll know it's operating well. Okay, and we can exit out of that. You can press escape as well. Okay, and basically that's how you perform a stress test on your computer. Whatever your resolution, if you put more, it's going to go, you're going to see that it goes, if you have a 1920 times 1080, if you do 4K or 2K, you're going to see that it's going to be longer than your actual uh, screen. So just escape out of that. If you can't uh, find the X to re uh, get out of the uh, uh, GPU for Mark uh, stress test. And that's basically how you set up uh, your CPU and your GPU for testing. And like I previously said, Having all your drivers is going to have your components perform the way they're supposed to. If they're supposed to be at a certain voltage, if they're supposed to be operating under, uh, operating well. And if you have any issues, just make sure that it's not an actual program versus an actual component. And you'll, seeing the symptoms, you'll realize, okay, I think it is this. When you perform certain operations that are CPU intensive versus GPU intensive. So just bear that, keep that in mind. I hope the video is informational and I hope that you, you feel like you can go and stress test your components, uh, at least your CPU and GPU. And I'll, 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 be, I'll be using more programs in the future. But as of right now, this is what I have and what I normally use. And they're pretty useful. They, most likely, you're not going to need any others. There are others, but you can use these if, if, if it's easy and comfortable for you to use these programs. And uh, let me know what you think about these programs or if you prefer another one or you have something that I should be looking at a uh, day hey, send me a comment so i can check it out all right take care